S. That's right, folks. C for comedy. C for co- A for Abbott. M for Maxwell. E for Ennis. L for Luke Costello. Put them all together and they spell camel. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. And draw up a chair for tonight's Camel Show, starring Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Stop that. Your appearance is disgraceful. Wait a minute. Why are you wearing that faded shirt? I've just been made a vice president of NBC. I... <laughs> Lou, I phoned you last night. Where were you? Where was I? Yeah. I was over at Earl Carroll's helping the bubble dancer blow up her bubble. Abbott, she was so grateful she gave me the best seat in the house. In the first row? No, inside the bubble. I... <laughs> I mean, what, what were you doing at Earl Carroll's? What was I doing at Earl Carroll? What were you doing at Earl Carroll? Looking for a place to invest our money. What do you mean? So I went over there to buy it. All night, the manager and I scribbled figures on the tablecloth. And you know, if you and I put all our money together, we could buy it. Earl Carroll's? No, the tablecloth. I, uh... <laughs> Shame on you hanging around with bubble dancers at night. <laughs> bubble dancers, nightclubs, you ought to be ashamed Have of it. Yourself. Me and that bubble dancer are engaged. I think I'll have to call it off. Why? Though. For two reasons. Her parents object to our engagement. And so does she. That... <laughs> I thought so. No girl would marry you and live in that broken-down shack you're living in. Broken-down shack? Yes. Yeah, but I'm proud of my home. It's the only house in California with Venetian blinds over the mouse holes. <laughs> Are you idiot? That place you live in has grass growing through the middle of the floor. What do you expect for $15? Brussels sprouts? Now, listen. <laughs> Castella, why don't you build yourself... Why don't you build yourself a, a little house out in the suburbs? Of course, you know what the suburbs are. Sure, that's French for a long bus ride. No, no, no. (laughs) Why, you could have a lovely little place with a garden on the front lawn. You could have flowers spelling out your name. The flowers? The flowers could spell out my name? Certainly. How do you like that? The flowers are smarter than I am. (laughs) Pastor, don't you want to own your own home? Don't you want to own your own home, Lou, so that you can sure. entertain and have people over for dinner? Abbott, I had a mob over to my house for dinner last night. I served pheasant, turkey, chicken, and caramels. Uh, wait a minute. You serve caramels with pheasant, turkey, and chicken? Sure. Before the guests can get their teeth unstuck, I eat all the white meat. <laughs> but it's no good, Abbott. I'm too poor to build a new house. Oh, now, wait a minute. You don't have to have money to build a new house. It's easy to finance. It's easy to what? Finance. Finance your, for your home. Why should I find ants for my house? My house is loaded with ants right now. <laughs> and furthermore, the ants find my house by themselves. No, no. <laughs> I saw one ant giving directions to another All ant right, now wait how to get to my joint. I understand. <laughs> I'm not talking. Listen, I'm talking about finance. Don't you know how to finance? Certainly I know how to finance. I just look in a sugar bowl and there they are. No, no, no. <laughs> still, you don't understand. You're talking about ants. I'm talking about finance. Like you finance in business. Oh, how do you like that? Now the ants are going into business. <laughs> they must be making chovies. Chovies? Sure, ain't you ever heard of anchovies? Oh, forget about finance. <laughs> Listen to me, Lou. Just forget about it. You'll need money to build a house, so I'll ask my wife to get you a loan. Get me a loan? Who wants to be alone with your wife? <laughs> I don't even want to be alone with you. No, no, no. I mean, my wife will get you a loan in the bank. Get me alone in a bank. Yeah. <laughs> what does she want to do? Waltz through the vaults? No, no. no. <laughs> so, listen, listen, you dummy. My wife will take you to the bank. She'll fill out the papers and take a lien against your new house. Your wife is going to lean against my new house? Certainly. That ton of stuff is going to lean against my joint? Your wife ain't leaning against my house, Abbott. Take it easy now. She's tired. Tell her to go home and go to bed. No, no, no. (laughs) My wife is in the mortgage business. A mortgage is a lien or chattel. Now, down at the bank, down at uh, the bank where my wife, uh, she has an old box full of chattels. Abbott, your wife is an old chattel box. Now, now, listen. (laughs) You ninja poop. You listen to me. I'm talking about chattels. Haven't you ever heard of a chattel? Chattel? 
Sure, my uncle's got a herd of chattel. He's got a herd of chattel, chows, and chads. He's also got chitchens. He keeps his chattel in a chow pasture and the chitchens in a chitchen chew. No, no. I'm not talking about cattle. You understand that? I'm talking about... Wait I... for the land! No, 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 no. I said chattel. Chattel is a loan. And to get a, to get a new house, you, you'll have to get a loan. And then you'll have to go through escrow. Why can't I go through Glendale? Uh, uh, <laughs> escrow has nothing to do with Glendale. Then Glendale will have nothing to do with escrow. Lock in there, Glendale. When you get a new house, you go through escrow to get a guaranteed title deed. Could you drag that last part past me again? Guaranteed title deed. 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 No, Babbitt, it's no good. What's the matter? It'll never take the place of Glockamora. Ah. Experience is the best teacher. The time, not so long ago. The characters, two sisters. Hi, Ginny. You can be glad it wasn't your turn to stand in line for cigarettes. Oh, my poor feet. What did you get? Oh, these. Well, can't be choosers these days. We've certainly tried all the brands by this time, I guess. Well, it's taught me something. I like camels better than any of them. Me too. Yes, experience is the best teacher. The experience of smoking whatever brands they could get during the wartime cigarette shortage taught millions the differences in cigarette quality. Their T-Zones, that's T for taste and T for throat, tested cigarette after cigarette. And of all those cigarettes, it was Camel's rich, full flavor and cool mildness that registered most enjoyably again and again with millions of smokers. Today, when it's again possible to choose your brand... More people smoke Camel's than ever before. Experience is the best teacher. Try a Camel. And while you light up a Camel, here's Skinny Ennis with... Ah, why does sudden change, why so cold and why so strange be sentimental? Don't hang your faith on jealousy and hate, cause I, I was never born for the touch of a witch's thong, so please be gentle to my heart. Why do you take my arms tonight? Then wander far from sight. Can't understand you, but remember this: if you really want my kiss, be sweet and gentle, lest we part. Remember, remember, I, if you love me, then you must be gentle to my heart, I, Understand you, but remember this: if you really want my kiss, be sweet and gentle, lest we part. Remember, remember, I If you love me, then you must. Be gentle to my heart, Ivy. Well, Mr. Stella, have you decided what kind of a house you're going to build? Have it. I'm thinking it over. I think I'm going to build an igloo. Igloo? Yep. Where can you get snow in California? I'll tell you if you'll tell me where I can get lumber in California. <laughs> you talk sense. How are you going to furnish the house? Well, I think I'm going to put a pinball machine in the living room, a card table, slot machine, pool table in the other room. Ah, oh, you idiot. What about chairs, stoves, and beds? Abbott, all I can afford is the necessities. <laughs> the luxuries will have to come later. Well, Casella, now that my wife has uh, okayed you at the bank for a loan, the first thing to do is go out and buy a lot. Buy a lot? Uh, buy yeah. a lot of what? A lot of nothing, just a lot. 
if I'm going to buy a lot, it's got to be a lot of something. I ain't spending my money for nothing. Listen, you don't, you don't get nothing. You get a lot. You take your money and buy a lot. Buy a lot of what? Look, you idiot. When I say you buy a lot, I'm talking about a lot you buy when you buy a lot. Oh, when you say you buy a lot, you're talking about a lot you buy when you buy a lot. Now you've got it. Now I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you can get a lot for a lot, or you can get a lot for a little. Make up your mind. Do I get a lot or a little? Now, well, I think you ought to start off with a little lot. Then later on, you can get a lot more lot for quite a lot more. Or you can get another little lot for quite a lot less. Oh, you think I ought to start with a little lot, and later on I could get a lot more lot for quite a lot more, and a little lot for quite a lot less. Now you've got the picture. Now I've got the picture. Excuse me for just one moment. Where are you going? I'm going in a dark room and try and develop it. Now, wait a minute. Oh, there's a new subdivision out in the valley. Uh, and we can take uh, take a look at uh, lots and lots of lots. Come on, let's go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> well, Costello, here's a new subdivision, and, and here comes the real real estate salesman. Yeah, good I'll afternoon, be gentlemen. I'm a very busy man. Busy, busy, busy. Just sign your name on the dotted line. The place is yours. What place? Well, well, honeymoon must be over. The customers are asking questions again. <laughs> Well, I'm a busy man. I only spend 30 seconds on my 60-second workout. I get 5 o'clock shadow at 3.30. On my third birthday, I was six years old. My favorite songs are Rainy Night in Cucamonga. That's a rainy night in Rio. I know, but I haven't got time to take the trip. <laughs> I'm a very busy man. Now, there's a beautiful lot on the hillside. It's kind of slopey, but I'll let you have it for $3,000. Well, now, wait a minute. Don't you think that's a pretty steep price? Yes, but it's a pretty steep lot. I... <laughs> yes, sir. I'm a very busy man. Now, some of these lots are a lot more than other lots. I can give you a little lot for a lot or a big lot for a little. <laughs> a little lot for a lot or a big lot for a little? Make up your mind. I'm a busy man. Do you want to start with a little lot and get a lot more lot for a lot less later? Come on, I'm a busy man. This guy ain't too busy to steal our routine. All right. <laughs> Hey, look, well, this lot has a pretty good view. Yes, from here I can watch for the day, the 7th of May. Yes, it has a wonderful view of all the movie studios. On your right is Paramount, hidden by the Santa Monica Mountains. On your left is Republic, hidden by the San Fernando Mountains. And straight ahead is Warner Brothers. Hidden by Sydney Green Street. Uh, <laughs> Mr. My friend Costello needs a small lot in which to build a house. Now, how much will it cost? Well, him? being it's Costello, I'll let him have it for a song. Oh, you'll let me have it for a song? Yeah. You got a deal. My wife! No, 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 quiet, quiet. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't mean that kind of a song. He does not mean that kind of a song. Will you keep quiet? I'm a busy, busy well, he don't mean that. Mister. What's the price of that? Uh, $2,900. $2,900? For this crummy piece of ground? This guy must think I'm a veteran. Hey, look, I'll handle it. I'll handle it. Just let me take over from here. Keep quiet. Uh, look here, you tin horn swindler. Don't try to rob my pal Costello. $2,900 for this gopher's playground. Uh, Mr. Abbott, there's 10% in it for you if I can unload this on Costello. <laughs> oh, why didn't you say so? 10%, eh? Uh, Costello, this lot isn't worth $2,900. No? It's worth $3,900. You see, mister? My pal over there's... Wait a minute. Just a minute. A minute ago, Abbott, you said this was a gopher's playground. Them gophers must be wearing mink coats. <laughs> How much ground do I get for the $3,900? Uh, come, I'll show you. We'll walk all around your lot. Yes, sir. Well, there you are. <laughs> How do you like it, Costello? Fine, but when we walk back, can we take a shortcut? <laughs> all right, give me your check. Now give me the deed. There, that's fine. And I want to thank you. Goodbye. Hey, just a minute. How, how do we get into town from here? Well, your property's just a stone's throw from the railroad station. Where's the railroad station? As soon as you throw enough stones, we're going to build one. <laughs> Come on, Costello. We're going into town to see a contractor so that you can start building right away. Costello, there's the contractor's office across the street. Hiya, fellas. Hi, Hiya. Hiya, Skinny. Hey, Costello just bought a lot near the river, and he's going to build a house on it. Well, I had a lot once on a river overlooking the bank. How did I you... lost it. How did you lose it? For overlooking the bank. I... <laughs> so long, Skinny. We get rid of him fast, yeah. don't we? <laughs> yeah. Well, come on, Costello. We've got to get over to the contractor's office. Well, if it isn't Mr. Albert and Mr. Costello. Bart, little mom, you. <laughs> oh, hello. What are you doing around here? Oh, I'm on my way to the contractor's. 
He's drawing some plans for my new boongaloo. Boongaloo? <laughs> oh, Abbott, you know what a boongaloo is? Boongaloo. That's a cottage with a puttio and a barbecue. <laughs> Don't you just love little boongaloos? Oh, I'd rather have a large munchon with a punt house and a two-car gruge. <laughs> well, housing is very bored in Hollywood. My aunt is living in a trailer comp in Santa Monica. That's nothing. My cousin puts the toont at Malibu Booch, and he's got a halibut for a room moot. <laughs> be doshing all. As we say in French, la boquette came de tom in la qu'est-ce que c'est to you? And a bucket of kemtone and a kiss of you too. <laughs> well, I do hope you build a house like my old home in Virginia. Oh, I miss that graceful patio, those smooth white pillars, that broad veranda. I know just <laughs> what you mean. I used to feel the same way about a blonde in Patterson, New Jersey. <laughs> Camel presents Lovely Marilyn Maxwell from Metro Golden Mayor, producers of The Sea of Grass. For Camel fans everywhere, Marilyn puts this question to music. When am I gonna kiss you good morning? Just like I kissed you good night. How can it be a beautiful morning if you are not in my sight? I'm not the kind who goes for all those hit-and-run kisses. I won't be satisfied until we're Mr. and Mrs. When am I going to kiss you good morning? Just like I kissed you good night. It's awful nice to spend the night romancing. It's thrilling every minute I'm with you But when I leave you now I'll be so lonely And the dawning will break Cold and blue When you're gonna kiss me Good morning Just like I kissed you Good night Buy a little ring for my finger Then we will do it up right We hide away in some cafe The candle lights bewitching I'd rather have those ham and eggs In our little kitchen When am I gonna kiss you good morning I won't be satisfied you're the groom and I'm the bride That I can kiss you All I please If you're looking for the rich, full flavor of superbly blended tobaccos If you want cool mildness, too Try a camel on your T-Zone that's tea for taste and tea for throat. See if Camel's rich flavor of choice tobaccos and Camel's cool mildness don't suit your tea zone to a tea. Then you'll understand why so many doctors smoke Camel's. Three leading independent research organizations recently asked this question of 113,597 doctors. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camel's than any other cigarette. Hey, look, Costello. This is the contractor's office. Oh, how do you do, gentlemen? As Louis XIV said to Louis XV, you're next. <laughs> oh, pardon me a second while I answer the phone. Hello? Yes, this is Brown, the contractor. You just built a house in Brooklyn and you want to move it to California? I'll have to check our rates and call you back, Mr. DeRoche. <laughs> Mr. Blau, my friend Costello would like to talk over some plans with you Oh, everybody's got plans They bother me all day One fella came in, wanted a three-room house I threw him bodily out the window Another fella came in, wanted a two-room house I kicked him down the elevator shaft Now what can I do for you? 
give me a package of Beeman Caps and chewing gum, please. Stop that, Costello. Tell the man what you want. Well, well, if it isn't too much trouble, I'd like to have you build me a house. Build you a house? Yes, sir. You've got a lot of nerve to stand there and ask me to build you a house when this city is suffering from a shortage of bowling alleys? <laughs> Mr. Brown, I wish you could see your way clear to build Costello home. Living conditions are pretty crowded in Hollywood. Crowded? Yes, it's so crowded in Hollywood that John's other wife is living with one man's family. <laughs> well, as one bullfrog said to the other bullfrog, let's hop to it. <laughs> There's no lumber, but I have a glass blower who blows three room bungalows. Oh, that wouldn't be bad. Where is the glass blower? Oh, I had to fire him. He was blowing some bungalows and he got the hiccups. Before I could stop him, he made 300 Quonset hearts. <laughs> are you building any houses for GIs? G- oh, yes. GIs are in here every day. They run around saying, GI wish I had a bungalow. GI wish I had a house. Gee, I wish I had some place to live. Uh, Mr. Brown, what will it cost to build a house for Costello? Well, let me see now. Lumber, $6,000. Cement, $3,000. Nails, $2,000. And um, $15,000 for the master plumber. Do I really need that master plumber? Well, certainly. Who else but a master plumber could put the cold water knob on the hot water faucet? <laughs> well, that'll make $26,000. Here, just sign the contract. I'll get you a pen. Uh... Thanks, uh, thanks. I have my own pen. It's the latest thing. It's an Italian pen. Italian pen? Yes, it has a meatball point and writes under spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, now that I have your signature, have you got a co-signer that will guarantee the payment? Co-signer? I haven't got any co-signer. No co-signer? Mm-hmm. Without a co-signer, I wouldn't build a house for the King of Siam. Mr. Costello, I've got to get a house. Please be my co-signer. You've got to be my co-signer. I can't do it. And quit following me around on that white elephant. <laughs> Who was that? Huh? Who was that? The King of Siam. <laughs> no sense now, Costello. Come on. We've got to get a co-signer. Mr. Abbott. Hello, Lewis, honey. Hello, Marilyn. Hello, Marilyn. Costello's thinking of building a new home. Yes, Marilyn. After the house is built, maybe we could get married and keep house together. Well, would you be a thoughtful husband? Would you wipe the dishes with me? Marilyn, I wouldn't wipe the dishes with you. I'd buy a dish rag. (laughs) Marilyn, if I marry you, will you let me be the boss and run things? Oh, I'd let you run everything. The washing machine, the vacuum, and all the errands. Goodbye. She Abbott, she's a lovely girl. She's the kind of girl I'd like to take home to my mother if I could only trust my father. <laughs> come on, come on. We're going in here to Mrs. Whitwash's house and see if she will be a co-signer for your new house. Oh, oh why, hello, Mr. Abbott. Oh, my goodness, I wonder who left that empty beer barrel on my front porch. <laughs> Oh, pardon me, it's Costello. I wish you hadn't said that, Mrs. Wetwash. I was just telling Abbott how you have that 1947 look. Oh, thank you. Oh, do you really think I have that 1947 look? Yes. You act like 19 and you're really 47. (laughs) Why, how dare you, you pudgy, pin-headed pipsqueak. (laughs) Why, Why, just look at this picture of me in my bathing suit. It was taken just after I came out of the water. How many days have you been in the water? (laughs) Quiet, Costello. Mrs. Wetwash, Costello wants to build a new house and he hasn't enough money. Would you be a co-signer? Why should I go-signer? If he wants somebody to go-signer, why doesn't he go-signer himself? Mrs. Wetwash, when Abbott says co-signer, he doesn't mean go-signer like you go to sign a thing when you go to sign it. He means co-signer like when you've got a lot of money, you're a co-signer. Oh! Oh, you mean co-signer, like when you have a lot of money, you're a co-signer. Now, you've got it. Now, I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Well, <laughs> well wow. never mind, Costello. I've got an idea. There's some old lumber in my backyard, and you can build a little shack to live in until you, till your house is built. Come on. <laughs> Costello, Costello! Why are you hammering on those boards so hard? No nails. I... <laughs> You're building this shack all wrong. Will you listen to me, please? It's all wrong. Look, you see that board on the roof? Yes. The, the, the one that's sticking out? Yes. Well, get the saw and see if you can saw the board you see. Okay. I'll... What did you say? <laughs> All I said was look for the saw and see if you can saw that board. See? 
See if I can saw the board. Yes. Can't you uh, saw the board? Certainly I can saw the board. Well, then go up on the roof and saw it. Why should I go up on the roof and saw it when I can saw it from down here? Well, you, you can't saw it from down here. Wait a minute, Abbott. Can you see the board from down here? Well, certainly. Well, I can see it from down here, too. I know you can see it. I want you to go up on the roof and saw it. Look, Abbott, I saw the board when I put it up there. I saw it before you did, and I don't want to see it again. I didn't ask you if you... I didn't ask you to see it. I asked you to saw it. Do you want me to see it or saw it? Well, now, you, look... You've got to see it, the saw it. Get me off this seesaw. I'm getting seasick. <laughs> Abbott, never mind all this. I'm going to go out and buy me a prefabricated house. Hey, now, that's a good idea. You come on over tomorrow afternoon and we'll have a house for me. Okay, Costello, I'll see you tomorrow. Not if I saw you first. Oh. <laughs> Costello. Oh, Costello. You come. Costello. Oh. Yes. Yes, yes. Look, Abbott. What? Oh, here I am, Abbott. Come on in and take a look at my new prefabricated house. I just finished putting it up. Look, Abbott. I've even got a beautiful fire going in a fireplace. Mm-hmm. Pretty, isn't it? Hey, this is a funny-looking house. Only one room, bare mm-hmm. walls. Uh, where did you get all that wood you are burning in the fireplace? The company was very, very nice to me. They sent it along with the house. Wait a minute. <laughs> let, 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 let me see those plans. Yes? Mm-hmm. I thought so. What? You idiot. You burned the house and you're living in the packing case. Oh, I'm a bad carpenter. <laughs> Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment for Camel Cigarettes. During the war, the makers of Camel Cigarettes sent a total of more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. Now free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Coatesville, Pennsylvania, U.S. Army McCornack General Hospital, Pasadena, California, U.S. Naval Hospital, Pensacola, Florida, U.S. Marine Hospital, Kirkwood, Missouri, and Veterans Hospital, Newington, Connecticut. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are still stationed and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now back to Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Well, Costello, you've done it again. Now you have no house. Where are you going to live? Well, I could go and live with my Uncle Artie Stebbins, but I don't want to. Where does your Uncle Artie live? In a big 500-room house overlooking a bay. Why, I'd call that a castle. Everybody else calls it Alcatraz. (laughs) Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Be sure to tune in next Thursday night to Abbott and Costello when they celebrate the first day of May. There'll be a big festival at Mrs. Wetwash's home, and Costello has his fortune told. Costello is a sucker for Sears. Tune in next week and listen to this Sears sucker. A man who smokes a pipe has pipe appeal, so the ladies say, and the tobacco that has pipe appeal is Prince Albert, as millions of pipe smokers know. Prince Albert's choice tobacco with its rich, full flavor and cool mildness has made it America's favorite pipe tobacco. Prince Albert is specially treated to ensure against tongue bite, crimp cut to smoke slow and cool. For real smoking comfort, try Prince Albert. Another American favorite, Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry, Saturday night on NBC. Red Foley sings the American folk songs you know and love. And if you don't already know and love Minnie Pearl and the other laugh makers on Grand Ole Opry, you will after you hear Grand Ole Opry on NBC, Saturday night. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember... Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for camels. If your community remains on standard time, listen to Abbott and Costello one hour earlier, starting next Thursday. Stay tuned now for the Eddie Cantor Show. This is Eddie Cantor.